Brothers, I want to tell you about a website called blackmenszone.com. Now, Black Men's Zone is a site that specifically targets black men. It's a place where black men talk about issues that solely affect them. Now, at Black Men's Zone, the topics will range from news to society, sports, technology, business, food and recipes. You know, some you know, you know, brothers got to cook too. Gaming, and some of your brothers like doing some of that. Health and fitness, you know, got to get your workout on. Music, movies, and many other topics. Now, there's not many forums around these days for black men, and because black men have to create them. Now, this particular website is more of a forum based something simple not social media you could write what you need to write say what you need to say get on get off pretty quick but if you're interested brothers to at least go there and i want you to check it out engage in the topics go to blackmenzone.com sign up for an account and get engaged in the conversation Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Crispy is ready to make a comeback. <laughs> oh yeah, Crispy, the Crispy puppet is ready to make a comeback. <laughs> oh yeah. I think Crispy is ready to come out with the little EP now. <laughs> All right, man, what's happening, guys? How y'all doing, man? I'm here. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, I am here. I am Tariq Nasheed, and I'm here for the family. I'll play it again a little bit later. i play the new Crispy song. <laughs> I'll play that a little bit later. All right. I got to see what's going on with the Crispy's Biscuits app. Now people are looking for the app. It's been so long, so... Um, <laughs> man, how y'all doing, man? What's going on, man? I'm here. I, I got back in town today from Atlanta. Um, what's up, courtesy of Stop Clowning Somalians? I am not clowning Somalians. I'm clowning some coons who are trying to talk bad on FBA. Um, but let me do, let's do this. Let, let me try something real quickly. Now, y'all saw the other day. I was trying to get my, hmm, hold on, let me see if I can get it back up. I was trying to get my Skype calls popping, but now I got Zoom. I got it on Zoom. So let me see, guys, if you guys can hit the link. I got a Zoom link below. I got to test it live to see if it works. I got a Zoom link below. See if you guys can get onto my Zoom page. Let me see how that works. Hit the link below. Let's do some live testing to see how this thing works. I'm not using Skype this time. I'm using Zoom, all right? So I've never used it like this. So let's see if it works. I'm experimenting right now. So 
hit that Zoom link below, some of you. Let's see if y'all can get on here. All right. Let me see if this thing works. Okay, we got Johnny. Okay, I see Johnny. Let me see if I can get Johnny on here. Into the room. Okay, Johnny, see if you can get on. Okay, what's up, Johnny? Say something, Johnny. Let me see if this works. Hold on. We got Johnny right here. Well, Johnny, can you say something? What's up, brother? There you go. How you doing, fam? Doing great, man. Glad to see you, man. Glad to be on. My man, over here looking like a, a member of Houdini and shit. But how you been, brother? <laughs> there you go. I want to test it out to see if it works. Oh, we got a lot of folks in. So thank you so much, brother. All right. So we got a lot of folks in. Let's see how this thing works. Let's see how this thing works. So, oh, okay. How'd I get Johnny out? Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Johnny, hold on. Hold on, Johnny. Trying to get your ass up out of here. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Uh, come on, thing. Now this thing wants to get all big and crazy. All right. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Let's see. Let's get Patrice up in here. I'm, I'm testing it out while we're live. All right. What's up, Patrice? Hop on camera, dear. I can't see you. Patrice, hop on, dear. You're standing in front of the food stamp office, and I need you to get on camera. Uh -huh. Patrice? All right, Patrice. What's going on? My Patrice is in witness protection. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. I can't. I, I see your oh, picture. Oh yes. How What's up, Flex? How are you, dear? I'm good. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm in Tennessee. Oh, cool, cool, cool. How are you? How you been? Right. Oh, well, well, well. made a mistake and muted. Hold on. Well, okay. How did I, I mute it? Everybody. How did I unmute people? Okay, cancel now. Okay. Can you say something again, dear? I made a mistake and muted you. Wait, wait, let me. Ah, damn. Okay, I gotta figure this thing out while I'm live. I'm getting it together, guys. Hold on, I made a mistake and I muted this sister. Unmute. Okay, let me unmute her. Okay, Patrice, can I unmute you? Hey, Tariq, I got your book. It's excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Let me um, let me try something. Thank you. Here. All right. All right, dear. Thank you. All right. Let's get mm -hmm. some. Okay. I got to figure out. Okay. Uh, all, right. all right. Let me see a couple of more people on here. Can y'all see, folks? I'm working it out while we're live, guys. I'm working this thing out while we're live. All right. Let's see. Let's get um Malik Sinaferu. Let's get him in here, brother Malik. Uh, what's this brother? What what are those? You got a whole bunch of bussies in the background. What is that in the background? What in the world is that in the background? <laughs> My man got bussy wallpaper in the background. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. Um, okay. All right, let me get somebody else, brother. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, let me try something else here. Okay. Don't record. Don't record. I'm not trying to record it. But... All right. And the, your audio wasn't working. Okay, so I'm just trying to see how this thing works, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying this thing to see how it works. Uh, let me try one more person just to see how this thing works. I'm testing it out. Let's get um, Elijah Harkless in here. I still got to figure this thing out. All right. I'm, I'm, it's better than that Skype, but the Skype, everybody and their mama was on. Elijah, what's happening? Okay. Elijah, I got to get you out of here because I don't hear nothing. Okay. I don't hear nothing. Oh, let me try something. You can put people in the waiting room. Hold on. Let's try this. Let's get Anne Marie in here. All right. Okay. Let's get Anne Marie. I'm going to put Anne Marie in the waiting room. Uh, however, that works. Let's try it again. Anne Marie. Let me get Anne Marie back in here. Let me get Liza Butler. I'm testing this stuff out. What's up, sister? She looked like she worked. 
for the child services. Some Liza, if you hop on, hop on, please. Let's see what's going on. We're testing it out. Ask to unmute, Liza. If you could hop on, Liza, that'd be cool. Okay. All right. All right, so we'll work it out later. Okay, I don't hear nothing from Liza. All right, All right let me just get back to what I'm doing. So I'm testing it out. This works a little better. I still have to work out the kinks. I still have to work out the kinks to make this thing flow. <laughs> What's up? Thank you for the cash app. People are hitting up with the cash app. Okay, this works a little bit better than the Skype. This works a little bit better than Skype. All right. But I'm here. Uh, listen. So look, today, and by the way, like I said, I just got back in from Atlanta. Shout out to everybody in Atlanta. Okay. Shout out to everybody in Atlanta. Had a great time in Atlanta. The, the, the Southern hospitality was phenomenal. I wanted to eat at that slutty vegan place that everybody was talking about. But every time I would go to the slutty vegan place, um, there was a long line at all of them. All the slutty vegan places, the line was long and I just didn't want to wait in those lines. And I'm so proud of the sister who owns the slutty vegan restaurant. She's doing such good business. It's the sister who owns that joint. She owns a few franchises of it. And she's doing phenomenal. I love to see black folks doing good, successful business. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. And Atlanta, beautiful city, man. Just the energy in Atlanta. I miss that Southern hospitality. It's very good to go down to Atlanta to just kind of get a, a recharge and a rebalance on your energy. Shout out to my good brother, Beehive. And his crew, I did an interview with my brother B. High over at Hot 107. And I just love that, that Southern hospitality energy down there. Absolutely love it down there. Um, there's one place that I kept eating. I ate at Harold's. Harold's down there is good. Harold's chicken is very good. Um, Chef Rob, Chef Rob's Caribbean, very good. I highly recommend that. Chef Rob's Caribbean, um, Oh, I had his stuff a few times. I, I, I'm gorging myself on that. Absolutely loved it. Love to see so many brothers and sisters doing good business there. Love it. And even the people who are working minimum wage and all that. When I would, I, I often go to the Waffle House when I go down there. I go to the Waffle House. I didn't go to 85 South Shore. I just, I didn't get a chance to reach out to him. Shout out to those brothers. Next time I go down there, I got to reach out to him. Um. I went to the Waffle House a lot out there because we don't have Waffle Houses out here. It's a Waffle House, man. Let me tell you something. Waffle House, the food is good and it's extremely cheap. You can eat very good at the Waffle House for under $10. You can have you a hearty breakfast at the Waffle House for under $10. Now, some people, if you're down there in the South, you're used to it, but we're not, you know, we don't have that out here. So I, I really, really get into it when I get out there. Yeah, Chef Rob is the truth. One thing I try to do, and, and Waffle Houses in Atlanta, they usually have a lot of older, sometimes elderly sisters who are waitresses there. They always got those, those elderly sisters who are working as waitresses there at those Waffle House restaurants down there, who are very sweet. They got that Southern motherly disposition very good, kind people. I love being around them. And I always make sure to over tip those sisters. If I see an elderly black woman working at like a Waffle House or a restaurant, I always over tip them. Like if the bill is $9 or $7, I'd give them like a $40 or a $50 tip. Huddle House. Yeah, I, I've been to Huddle House too. That is good. And what's funny, when I would leave these big tips to these sisters. When I leave, I can see their eyes bucking <laughs> when they look at the tip. <laughs> like when I leave and I can see them in the window when they're cleaning up the table and they see the money. <laughs> their reaction is hilarious. 
Because, you know, the I, I get something simple. I usually get a waffle, some grits. I love grits and coffee or something. And the bill is usually 8 or $9. Then I'll leave them like 50 bucks as a tip. And then I see them. I'm, I'm in the car outside and I'm watching them, you know, kind of clean up. Then they see the money. <laughs> then they start looking around, bucking their eyes like... They start bucking their ass like it's a mistake. They kind of start looking for me as if they, I don't know, I think they think I left more money by mistake or something. Lord Jesus. Where that man? Where that man at? You can see the eyes bucking, but God bless them. God bless them. I hope they enjoy the blessing. I hope they enjoy the blessing. Yeah. But always got to always look out for those sisters, man. Always look out for them. Always look out for them. Always look out for them. Yeah. <laughs> Bojangles is good too. Um, Captain D's. What y'all know about Captain D's? Yeah. Captain D's. Their fish. I had some fish at this place. Um, right. Across the street from the radio station on, um, is it Marietta Boulevard? It's a, I was filming there on my Instagram the other day. I forgot the name of it. It's right on Marietta Boulevard, I think. And it's like a little burger fish stand. And it, it, I had some fish there. It was too salty. It was too much. They just, they seasoned it just a taste too much, nigga. Or maybe my, my taste buds aren't used to all that damn seasoning no more. Yeah, maybe my, my taste buds, because, yeah, they, you know, I I have West Coast taste buds now. So, no, I go out there and all that Lowry's and all that seasoning. I do you feeling like white folks? Hey, my God. <laughs> hey, God, I need an avocado wrap. Like, shit. They be seasoning the hell out of that food out there. Long John Silver's is good, man. Them hush puppies. Yeah. But I enjoy it. Yeah, they overseas it big time. They overseas it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just way too much salt. Sometimes they just go overboard. But um, I get a lot of restaurants out there that we just don't have out here. Like Crystal's. I go to, to Crystal's, that restaurant. I like that. So, a lot of great eating options out there in Atlanta. Yeah, you're salt sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love hush puppies. It's all gravy. Um, anyway, let's get into what we're talking about today, guys. On today's broadcast, we're talking about the importance of respecting our lineage. I need y'all to hit that like button. Need y'all to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, as you know, we're talking about foundational Black American lineage and history and culture. And it is extremely important that we respect and acknowledge our unique culture as foundational Black Americans. Right now, there's a lot of debates and stuff going on on Twitter space and Clubhouse and all that. Most of those are just straw man arguments and a lot of people are having a culture shock because foundational Black Americans are doing something that we have not done really in the last 400 years, which is look out for foundational black Americans. First, in order for any group to survive and thrive, you cannot sustain yourself by extending and overextending yourself, assisting so many different groups and people without replenishing the resources that, that has been extrapolated from your group. Okay? So it's important for us to as foundational black Americans, to not be ashamed to look out for ourselves. We're told that if we look out for ourselves, we're divisive, 
We're xenophobic. We, we're told all of this nonsense. I want black folks to not even buy into that because these are straw man arguments. These are a bunch of straw man arguments that people throw out because of the slave mentality that they forced on us. Slaves work for other people and sacrifice their own needs. That's exactly what slavery is, and that's what people expect us to do. We've been working for people and giving them resources and building up tangibles for other people for so long, every group think they can come on over here and have us do the same for them. And at this juncture, for the first time in our history, we're saying, no, we're going to look out for ourselves. And family, nobody can really do anything about it because that's called being on code. This is called being on code, ladies and gentlemen. And when you're on code, the code is in here, okay? So you can't do anything about people being on code. Just around, yes, that's the name of the place called Just Around the Corner. Yes, it was called Just Around the Corner. The fish was way too salty. Yes, Just Around the Corner, the fish is way too salty. But look, going back to what I'm saying, family, don't fall for shaming tactics that people try to use. Because here's the thing. The fact that we're looking out for our own group, Foundation of Black Americans first, because look, we, we've always helped other people. We will continue to help other people. We want, we want everybody to thrive. We want everybody to do good. We want justice for everybody. But we're not going to sacrifice our own best interest for justice for everybody. Okay, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do it in a suicidal manner. We're looking out for ourselves because we just, we've neglected ourselves because other people have neglected us. We're just not going to do that. And family, we have to respect our lineage. Our foundational Black American ancestors, they sat here and sacrificed. They suffered. They struggled. They resisted. They persevered. For us to carry the mantle of justice, they didn't do all of that, survive all of that. The greatest atrocity in human history, they didn't survive that for us to let other people disrespect who they are. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm all about respecting our ancestors and our lineage. We, as foundational Black Americans, we are a very unique and exceptional group of people, okay? We are an exceptional group. We are taught that we should be invisible, meaning we don't really have a group identity. We're part of a global mass blackness. But all of these other global black people have their own identity that we are not a part of, but we're not supposed to have our identity that they're not a part of. See, that's the game that's been played, this, this real janky, weird game that we're, we're told that we got to go along with. Other people can celebrate the Caribbean Day Parade, the Puerto Rican Day Parade, the Jamaican Day Parade, and all of their culture. They can run around with flags and jump around and eat um, beans with Goya and all of They can do all of this stuff, and we're supposed to respect it. But when we say, hey, we want to acknowledge and, and respect our foundation of Black American lineage. Now, everybody's like, hey, wait a minute, that's divisive. What lineage? You still, you African, ain't you? That's been a con game that's been run on us, ladies and gentlemen. The African word put on us is a con game. That's not to disrespect African people. We're genetically African, just like most people on the planet are genetically African. But we've let people politicize the word African and put it on us, and that word has been used against us, if we're going to be very honest. Because culturally now, we, like Caribbeans, 
and other groups that migrated out of Africa, we are not classified culturally or should not be classified culturally as African because we have a unique culture outside of Africa. You understand? And what we do, whenever we accomplish something, we chop that up and give it to Africa. So we've been upholding and uplifting Africa more than Africans have been doing it. Let me say that one more time. Foundational Black Americans, we've been the ones upholding the image of Africa more than Africans have been doing this. A lot of people from the continent are trying to get the hell up out of there. We've been the one talking about the great history. We've been the one talking about ancient Kemet and ancient Mali. And we've been the ones upholding that. We've been the ones doing that. We've been the ones doing that damn near exclusively. Now, you have a couple of brothers and sisters in Britain, um, um, Robin Walker, brothers like that. But for the most part, we've been the one pumping up the great African civilizations of yesteryear. And the people over there, let's keep it a buck. A lot of people over there, like, damn all that. We trying to get over there with y'all. But it's being flipped on us and we're told, we've been told this lie that foundational black Americans don't have a culture. That's not only a lie, that is a projection. Not only is that a lie, that's a projection. Foundational black Americans are told that if we look out for our foundational black American lineage and acknowledge our lineage, well, y'all just hate to be African. Those are shaming tactics. Number one, we have not lived in Africa for centuries. No, no group that has been out of a certain continent for centuries still puts that title on their name. No group does that. The people in Australia migrated out of Africa, but they don't call themselves African Australians. The people in Melanesia and Fiji, they migrated out of Africa thousands or maybe hundreds of years ago. They don't call themselves African Fijis. They are a distinct group with a distinct culture. The Jamaicans, Dominicans, Haitians, Trinidadians, they've been over here in the Western Hemisphere as long as many of us. They're not required to use the words African Jamaican, African Trinidadian, African Haitian. They have a unique, specific culture. But we're told that we have to carry the mantle of the word African before we label what our culture is. We have a unique culture outside of Africa. And everybody knows this. And we shouldn't be ashamed to acknowledge it. The problem is people get mad at that and come up with these straw man arguments because now when we use the term foundation of black American, instead of this whole minority coalition that is one-sided, besides this whole people of color coalition that's one-sided, we're not doing the coalition thing. We have a, a lineage that's exclusive and we exclude people. So now everybody can't come latch on to it. See, they don't let us latch on to their culture and we're supposed to respect that. No group lets us latch on to their culture, but we are supposed to let everybody come latch on to our culture and do whatever they want with it and ultimately disrespect it. This is why you had people like Nicki Minaj and Rihanna and all these people making disparaging terms or, or, or disparaging remarks and, and posts about Dr. King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, and all of that. And we had to check them on that because and, and um, Michael Blackson, he made some little slick comments that other comedians had to check him on. He made some slick comments about Dr. King. We got to watch 
those folks. They feel like they can disrespect our ancestors and our lineage. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. It's up to us. Yeah, Jesse Wu, that's another one. It's up to us to stop that. You can't go to their homelands and disrespect what few icons they have. They don't have too many. They have some local icons. You better not say anything negative about their local icons. They don't play that, and we shouldn't play that either. We have to have more respect for our ancestors, our, our grandmothers, grandfathers, the the. FBA family who survived slavery and created the culture that everybody is enjoying, we have to have respect enough for them to protect and respect the lineage and make other people respect it. You understand? So this is why it's important for us to use the term FBA because so many people can remix all of these other terms. All of these other terms were thrown out there um, as a political snake move. They were making us use the term African-American because that term would make us comparative to immigrant groups. So if we're African-American, that's, compar that's comparable to an Asian-American, that's comparable to an Ethiopian-American. See. You put a foreign name in front of the local name, so that makes you an other. We're not others. That makes us an other on our own land. It makes us comparable to um, uh, Somalian American, Korean American, um, Saudi Arabian American. We're different. We are the only non-immigrants. And the name of the game is to put that African term on us so that they can somehow flip and twist us into some type of immigrant group. Notice how they always try to cobble us, find a way to twist us into some type of weird immigrant status. You understand? Yeah, they had Jesse Jackson start doing that in 84. But they always try to, even I think Obama had a, tried to say that we were immigrants and they always try to say slick stuff like, well, immigrants built America. No, they didn't. Didn't no damn immigrant build America. We have to stop lies like that. We have to stop lies like that. I think Ben Carson even said something to that effect about immigrants built America and all that. And being enslaved was like immigrants because we all came over on boats. See, that's why the whole we all came over on boats thing was pushed. That was another lie. Everybody did not come on boats. Okay? This is why when we keep pointing out there were black aboriginal people already here who mixed with the very few people who were brought over on the boats. See, they want to play the I'm white and I say so. No, no, uh, yeah, huh? Yeah, there were. Too much evidence, too much proof showing that there were black aboriginal people on this land. There were black Aboriginal people on this land. Let's be very clear. And family, I'm talking about there were black Aboriginal people who were actually well known. There were black Aboriginal people who were clicked in with, with certain tribes out here. And sometimes they would just label them Negro. They would just say they they were, they would often say they were African American. I mean, in, in modern times, back then they would just call them Negro. Or they would call them a Negro Indian or whatever. But there were people who were Native American and who were still considered Negro, who were famous. One in particular, a guy up there who was in Minnesota, I think he was in Minnesota, I think, name was um, George Bonga. This was a black Indian. He was well known, George Bonga. Let me show pictures of George Bonga. And they, they would call him a Negro. They knew he was, you know, black and indigenous. Hold on, let me show you a picture. I mean, there were famous people. Hold on. Let me show y'all some images here. Let's let's do some some research here. Let me show y'all what we're talking about. This is, this is the famous George Bunga. All right? So this was a black Native American. Very well known. Very well known. He was the fur trapper. They would say that his, his dad was a slave, and they say that 
he was a Negro. Now they say the dad was African American, but they say the dad was Negro. But there's no evidence that his dad was brought over from Africa. And this man was part of a Native American tribe. He was the spokesperson for the Native American tribe. Okay? George Bongo. All right? More images of George Bongo. Let me show more images of him. Yeah, clearly a black man, but he was indigenous. All right? So again, there were well-known people. I was talking the other day on, on the um, Twitter Live. They would name cities and, and, and towns after certain black aboriginals, like Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I, I, I lived in Birmingham, and Tuscaloosa was right outside Birmingham. Tuscaloosa was named after a black Native American. Tuscaloosa means black warrior. It means black warrior. It was named after a black Native American or black indigenous person. Now, I say that to say this. The black indigenous people mixed in with the African people who were brought over, the 3% the that was brought over here. And when we were put on those plantations and we were amalgamated over here, we became a whole different group. We became a brand new group that made us foundational black Americans, okay? That made us foundational black Americans, ladies and gentlemen. And so many black people who are Aboriginal here mixed in with the other Africans who came over. This is why we we can say that foundational black Americans really got things started in 1526 when those Moors, those black Moors that were actually brought over from Spain, they were enslaved because the, the, the Moors were fighting the Spanish over there and there were Moorish prisoners of war. They brought them over here to San Miguel del Guadape, which is around the border of South Carolina and Georgia. The slave colony, well, they, they tried to start a colony there, and they had the enslaved Moorish people. The Moorish people rose up, ran the Spanish out of there, and then those black Moors blended in with the Native American tribes on the East Coast. Okay, so we've always been blending in with the Native Aboriginal people, forming a new ethnic group, which are foundational black Americans. This formation got started 1526 in large numbers. Now, let's be clear. There were, before that, there were other trade expeditions coming from um, the old world over here. But officially, in large numbers, where we start seeing the uh, black people coming over from Africa, mixing in with the Aboriginal people here, 1526 in large numbers. And this was the culmination of what would become foundational black Americans. Okay, we can't chop everything up to Africa because even when the black people were brought over from Africa, their Africanness was stripped from them. So they were forced to become a new people. Okay, they were forced to become a new people. So it's important for us to understand that unique lineage. And when we became foundational black Americans, we started brand new cultures. We started to talk differently. We came up with a different dialect, uh, a different diet, different ways to create herbs and medicines. We created different things in order to survive and sustain ourselves. You understand? So we started to create a whole different culture. Justin, if you're African, knock yourself out. If you're African, knock yourself out. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing Wakanda because I'm going to give my props to the people who sacrificed for me, the people in my immediate family, the people from the immediate lineage. I'm going to give my props to the Harriet Tubmans, Frederick Douglass, Nat Turner, John Horse, 
other riders, Gabriel Prosser, Denmark VC, the foundational black Americans who put in work here. I'm a foundational black American. You understand? I am a foundational black American. Just like Jamaicans are Jamaicans, they're not African Jamaicans, they're Jamaicans, they have their own culture. I'm not giving up this culture that we created, which is the most thorough culture that everybody wants to glom onto. Foundational black American culture, that's the culture that everybody wants to get a hold of. Let's be very clear. So when people try to say, well, you have no culture, we are the culture. That's why people are clamoring to get over here. We are the foundation of this nation. I want people, and I want us to get that in our heads because they'll try to drill in our heads that we were just slaves. Look, we built this country exclusively, foundation of black Americans. White people don't even get credit for being the foundation of this country. Let me say that again. White people don't even get credit for being the foundation of building this country. Once we got the foundation started, yeah, they started building up from the foundation that was laid. Let's be clear, but white people, the white supremacists didn't even do it because when they tried to do it on their own, they failed. When the white supremacists tried to build a foundation on their own, they repeatedly failed over and over and over again. They did not succeed or get anything going until black people were officially put in the picture. They didn't get nothing going on. It was us who knew how to grow crops, knew how to dig ditches and, and build bridges and, and tunnels and clear the brush and sustain the hard work needed to build a new nation, to create a foundation for a new nation. We were the ones who had the tenacity to do that. Now, some people will say, well, you niggas did it by force. You niggas were slaves. Doesn't matter. You were abused and made to do it. Doesn't matter. It was still done by us. Do you understand? It doesn't matter if we were abused, beaten, and made to do it. The final work was still done by us. The greatness that came out of it was attributed to us. Family, who do you give credit to making the album Thriller to? Michael Jackson or Joe Jackson, who forced Michael to sing and dance and whooped his ass when he was a kid, allegedly, and made him practice and rehearse to become great. Who do you give credit to for Thriller, the greatest album of all times? Do you give it to Michael or do you give it to Joe Jackson for the ass whoopings? Who do you give, it, who do you give the credit to? You're gonna give the credit to Michael. Yeah, Michael and Janet, they were like, yeah, we really didn't want to perform. The, the, the Janet Jackson documentary, boy, it was, it was a little, it got a little dark for a minute because Janet was like, I really didn't want to sing, but my dad made me. He made it into one of the biggest music icons. But you're still going to, yeah, even though they felt like they were forced to do it, which in many cases, I think they probably were forced. Joe Jackson, he was giving out ass whoopings. He was giving out some ass whoopings. Like, yeah, y'all going to be great. Y'all ain't going to be out here playing and, and playing kickball and playing sports and jumping jacks. Y'all about to go sing and make some money. They didn't want to do that kind of messed their childhood up. Let's be real, it messed their childhood up. There was some trauma there. There was trauma there. But they were still great. Michael was still great. Janet was still great. But you're still going to give credit to Michael and Janet for being great. 
Just like with the white supremacists. The white supremacists are the Joe Jacksons of America. And we're Michael. And America is Thriller. All right? America is the Thriller album. Foundation of Black Americans, we're Michael and Janet, and the white supremacist is Joe Jackson. You understand? So no matter what the process was to get it done, ultimately, we did the heavy lifting, and now they want to erase that. See, they don't want us to look at the nation we built in those terms, because when you look at something that you built, you start to appreciate it more. So they keep telling you, well, you came from something else. You came from somewhere else. Yeah, you came over here and you were traumatized, but boy, back home, but you got a, there's Wakanda back home. You came from something else. You came from a whole different place. Oh, really? A place better than this? Oh, yeah, much better than this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Much better than this. And maybe you can go home one day. Maybe you can go back over there. Now that you've done all this and built all this for us, maybe you can go back home. But see, black folks, we've been told, we got family members, especially black folks with older family members. We keep getting told that certain people in our family didn't actually come from Africa. Certain people in our family came from certain tribes. We've heard this in our families for years. This is why they had Skip Gates do that jive-ass special that he did talking about black celebrities and their Native American and Aboriginal genealogies. That show was put out there to debunk it. That show, they always go back to Skip Gates telling a few black celebrities that they're not really, they don't really have Native American in their family. That's horse shit. That's, that, that's BS. That's rubbish. And so they got Tina Turner, Chris Rock, Oprah, and they're like, hey, look, we did your genealogy. You guys don't have no Native American in you. All you guys go back to Africa. See? And they're like, oh, damn, I was always told I had some Native American ancestry. Well, a lot of black people be saying that. Oh, you know, that's not true. And the white people, there's a reason why they did that. Skip Gates is a do-boy for the white supremacists. Skip, Skip Gates is a tool. Our good brother... Professor Smalls and those guys, John Henry Clark, they used to clown Skip Gates. They used to clown Skip. Skip Gates is a do-boy for the white supremacists. They called him Skip the Truth. They called him Skip the Truth Gates. He got caught trying to hide Ben Affleck's slave-owning family. Ben Affleck... They did some kind of genealogy and Ben Affleck's people called and said, hey, don't don't show don't show that my father, my, my, my parents, grandparents and all them were slave owners. So Skip Gates took all of that stuff out. So he's not a trustworthy dude. And let's be clear, a lot of that DNA is sketchy. You can't really tell what tribal group or aboriginal group. A person comes from because of with DNA. That's why with um, Native American tribes now, in order to distinguish a Native American connection with some of these so-called federally recognized tribes, they don't even use DNA no more because it's not reliable. They don't use DNA because it's not reliable. Why is it not reliable? Because certain things make up different ethnic groups and it's not always a difference of DNA. For example, in Africa, there's a gazillion different tribal and ethnic groups. They're all on the same continent. They all have the same DNA, but they still have different cultures and different ethnicities, ethnic differences, just like with Aboriginal tribes here. Many of the tribes were named by explorers. European explorers saw a bunch of different types of Native Americans from different tribal groups and ethnic groups living by a creek, and the white supremacists said, hey, you guys are the Creek Indians. That's where the Creek name came from. The white supremacists said, hey, y'all y'all living by the Creek? You're Creek Indians. So, how would DNA trace to a 
Creek Indian when a white supremacist just made it up on the spot. They kind of made up names for certain Native American tribes, just like Seminoles. There's no such thing really as a, a, a genetic Seminole. Seminole means runaway. We talked about that many times. That's, it comes from the Spanish word Cimarron. It means runaway. So there are no really ethnic Seminoles like that that can trace back hundreds of years. Yeah, you have the Washita and the Yamasee. You, you understand? So a lot of the DNA test, it will, really all of it is going to trace back to really three places, Africa, Europe, or Asia. Almost every single person's DNA will trace back to that. And what markers are they using for Aboriginal tribes? You understand? Because a lot of the tribal groups, a lot of them disappeared and blended in and were amalgamated into black society and then later on white society. That's why when you see so-called Native Americans now, they look damn near white because most of them are really $5 Indians. They're not really white at all. And we know the get down they did with the dolls rolls. It was white people paying money to get labeled as Native Americans. And nobody ever questions that. It's always, they got to question our authenticity authenticity when it comes to us acknowledging Aboriginal heritage. Now, um, you got to be careful when you acknowledge the Aboriginal heritage because we have to understand black people, even the ones who are Aboriginal, were still blended in with a lot of African people who were put on those plantations. And also because of the segregation laws, all black people were pretty much put in the same communities together, even after slavery. You understand? So it's very important to understand all of this. So this, when we talk about foundation of black Americans, we're talking about the people who are classified as black mixed in on those plantations. We created a whole brand new culture and we have to respect that culture and don't be ashamed to respect that culture because that is who we are. And Using the term African is a very dangerous term. And I'm going to play a clip from my brother, Claude Anderson. It's a very dangerous thing to do use the, using the term African. All right, let me find that clip of Claude Anderson. Hold on, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Okay, this is Claude Anderson on The Breakfast Club. And this is my mentor. And this is who I got the game from. Now listen to Claude Anderson break this down. All right. This is who I got the game from. Listen. 64 white Indian chiefs that come to the White House, give them everything they want. Is that why you use the term Native Blacks? As That's right. African -Americans? That's right. Native okay. Blacks. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I love, I want, I want to help all Blacks on earth. But if you don't use the word Native Blacks, you shoot yourself in the head. Gotcha. Because, you know, because if you say African American, the first human beings came out of Africa. Anybody on earth that comes to America is an African American. You can be white and come from you at tomorrow. You, you, you're an African American. That makes total sense. And, and see, and that's the first thing that hurts. So you can't, that's a very, very broad term. Who's an African American? Anybody can be an African American. Okay. Secondly, why is black, why is Native American important? Because, because this nation owes black folk. 98% of all the black people in America were here before 90% of all the other people ever arrived. Mm. Black, those native blacks, and the reason I say native because they, they took them out of Africa, they stripped them of their Africanness. They, 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 they took away their names, everything, their culture, their history. Then they have a seasoning process for a slave. Three months was to break him in to being a slave. That he could no longer be identified with Africa or anything. That he was just black, period. But see, and, and so the government right now owes black people, native blacks. They don't know African, they don't have, I don't know. They don't think they don't know Africa or anything. If you say you're an African American, white says, "Shoot, I don't know. I don't know. We never enslaved in Africa. We enslaved some blacks. We we got in here, but they weren't Africans. We stripped them of an Africanness. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, your blackness is your honor, your culture, your history. That's right. It's your. It's a there you go. There you go. That's the master teacher, Claude Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. That's who I got the game from. That's who Claude Anderson has been using the term native black American for a long time. Okay. Hold on. 
Hold on. Okay, hold on. Native Black American. All right. And let me show you old tweets of mine. I used to use that term all the time. I've been using that. I used to use it going all the way back to um, 2018. Hold on. I'm looking up my, some of my old tweets right now. Hold on. Um, yeah, going all the way back to 2018. I'm looking up my old tweets. Hold on. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you that I've been using that term. Then I said, let me flip this thing and make it a little more tight. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to go to it. Hold on. I'm trying to go to it. Trying to go to it. I'm, I'm digging through all my, my old tweets to show some chronology here. Okay. Okay. I'm going through my old tweets. Um... Uh, Okay, hold on. Da, 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 da. I'm going through my old tweets. I'm looking for it. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on. Where's that? There we go. Okay, going all the way back to November of 2018, right here. All right, some of my old tweets. I would use the term Native Black American. A lot of us talking about Sambos that are anti Native Black American. So, Back in 2018, some of my old tweets, I was using that term. You're not in a position to disrespect any native black Americans right here. I was checking a damn non-FBA tether. I've been checking tethers. I've been checking tethers for almost five years, dude, or on, on Twitter, longer than that. So, yeah, here's some... Yeah, these are some non-FBA tethers working for white mommy, white daddy. So I've been checking them. I was talking, hit me checking Candace Owens, talking about how she's not a native black American. So I, I've been using this term for a long time because I got it from Dr. Claude Anderson. Okay. I got it from Dr. Claude Anderson. I got that term from him. It's the same as foundational. And the reason why I changed, I said, let me tighten it up a little bit because oftentimes I would use the term native black American and then some people will say well do you mean native Americans who are mixed with black or do you mean a black skin native American so they would oftentimes get confused a native black American do you mean a black person who was enslaved by native Americans so they would kind of get confused with that I said okay let me do this because sometimes people would still get confused with the native black American title. And one thing I don't want is any confusion. I don't want any confusion. I don't want any confusion. Because people can remix. If, if there's confusion, if there's any kind of confusion, if there's any kind of confusion, we got to be careful. Somebody said, why didn't I correct Adolf? Let me, whoa, great question. Let me get on that. I didn't want any confusion, so I said, let's let's do foundational because black people are not just native. They're native black people here, but we're the foundation of this country because we built it during slavery. We built the country, so we are foundational black Americans. We got to really tighten it up. So that excludes some like Cherokee tribes or whatever who might try to claim some little black ancestry, a white Cherokee might try to claim a little black ancestry and say, well, he's a native black American. No, there's only one group that are foundational who built the country from scratch. Foundational black Americans. You can't remix that. Foundation means from the soil. Foundation means the people who built it. The red skin native Americans did not build America in any sense of the word. You see? The red skin Native Americans had no input on the building of the United States. These are just facts. That's not a diss. I said that before. They're like, oh, well, this is no, no. That's not a diss. The red skin Native Americans did not build anything as far as Nate uh, of, of, of America, the United States. They didn't do anything. Now, many of them were on the land or whatever. There were wars or whatever. But as far as building the, the United States, no. So when you use foundational, that excludes them, the red natives. 
You dig? And the, the $5 Indian. See, that excludes all of them. That excludes a lot of the, the new folks who come in and be like, hey, if y'all get reparations, I'm African, I'm on some too. That excludes them too. Yeah. Now, with the ADOS thing, when they were using the hashtag, which I later found out that was stolen from Brother Norris Sheldon. It was a black man, old school brother named Norris Sheldon, who used the term descendants of American slavery. He's been using that term for, for decades. There was a brother named Norris Sheldon using the term descendants of American slaves. Strappy and Tone Tits got the game from him and remixed his lineage designation and, and flipped the letters around and said ADOS, American descendants of slaves. And then we started promoting that hashtag. Oh, I said, okay, that sounds like foundational black America. That sounds like native black America. That sounds like what Claude Anderson is doing. Okay, let's roll with that hashtag. We'll put that hashtag out there. And I blew that hashtag up. The ADOS hashtag was blown up by me. There was too much confusion with the whole ADOS thing. Then that became confusing because Strappy and Tone were deliberately trying to confuse people with it. It was supposed to be a lineage, which is what they the, the term they stole from Norris Sheldon. But then they're up here talking about it's a lineage and it's a group that they're the leaders of. It, it, then it turned into dumb nonsense. And I wasn't with that at all. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm group. Your lineage is not a group. I don't know what y'all talking about. You understand? And then it became a whole thing because I got that thing going. I got it popping. And then, as you know, Strappy and Tone, they were basically co-opted by the Democrats. And then it became something where they wanted to use that to finesse folks to stay on the Democratic treadmill and then, no, 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 they ain't doing all that. They were about to, they were already baiting and switching, talking about vote down Democrat and all this. It became a finesse and it was confusion. And I distanced myself from that. And there's a reason why the FBA designation is going strong now and ADOS is a relic. All the people over there at ADOS, they had a, they collapse. They want to blame their collapse on me. And yes, I was very responsible for the collapse of ADOS, but they were going to collapse anyway because they all turned on each other. As you see, they didn't turn on each other. There's so many different splinter groups that didn't popped out of that. They're all, it, it, it just crumbled. It crumbled because it became something else. And with foundational black Americans, the, the designation has never changed. It is not an organization. It is not a group. It is not a, just a hashtag. It is a lineage. We're talking about a lineage. Either you are born a foundational black American or you are not. There are no leaders. There are no, there's no paperwork you got to sign. FBA is sticking because there is no confusion. And what's interesting, people who are on the outside, they try to create confusion because they are powerless to do something about a code. The foundational Black American designation is all about codification. And our brother Neely Fuller tells us the importance of being on code because can't nobody do anything about people on code. Your code is in here. They can't do anything about that. See, the fact that we're all on code all around the country and we did a power move, meaning we designated ourselves. We designated ourselves. We said who we are. We didn't let somebody name us. And if you look at a lot of tethered sambos, they'll say, the white men don't recognize FBA. See, that's a sambo mentality. 
we're not waiting on the white man to acknowledge our lineage. We're acknowledging our lineage. We don't give a damn if they acknowledge it or not. We, we don't care. I could care less if any white person, if the government or anybody acknowledges our lineage, which they're doing anyway, because we're doing it. So they're going to have to do it sooner or later, which they're doing now. If you look at the mainstream media, there, you look at articles, they're saying it. Foundation of Black Americans. Foundation of Black Americans in the international press. Foundation of Black Americans. Because the grassroots is always going to win. When the grassroots gets on code, everybody else gets on code. All of that massa didn't say you can do that. No, we ain't waiting on massa. This, we're not doing this for no damn approval. We're not acknowledging who we are to impress no damn body. This is for us. This ain't performative art. See, that's what ADOS and all that goofball nonsense, it became performative. They're doing pumpkin carvings and little LGBT meetups and all this. That's performative. Y'all, I don't know what y'all trying to do. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Y'all done, y'all done flipped and done something. I don't know what y'all trying to do. Over here, we're just talking about lineage. We're talking about lineage, and we have not wavered from that at all. We have not wavered from lineage. And again, now that we are acknowledging our lineage, and people can't do anything about it, they have to try to reframe what we are. They try their best to crowbar a false narrative about what foundational black Americans are. So they get online trolling, foundational black American, that's a cult group. That's a hate group. That's them trying to forewall us in order to, carp to compartmentalize us, in order to denigrate. But they can't. Because that's not going to work because we're not a four wall group where we meet up somewhere. See, it's easy to target a group. It's easy to target a leader. It's easy to, to target a location. You see, they always have to try to frame it in the narrative of, well, these are the leaders. Ain't no leader. Nobody's a leader of anything. So this is why if I die next week, knock on wood, Foundational Black Americans are still going to be acknowledging foundational Black Americans. There's no leader. It's a code. The code is the leadership. We're not following people. I'm not the leader of anything. The code is the leadership. Our lineage is the leadership. We're following the codification of acknowledging our lineage. We're respecting our lineage, and that is the code. And foundation of Black Americans, we have a unique lineage. And that's what it is. And we have a unique culture. Most of the things in this culture of America where people come over to, we've created it, family. We've created so many things, family, but they were just taken. We create things, and that's a part of our culture, creating things and just giving it away. We have to stop doing that. We have to acknowledge what we've done and created because we've given away so much stuff, people have the nerve to turn around and say, well, damn, y'all niggas ain't got no culture. Yeah, we are the culture. Everything that you do now, the history of Foundation of Black Americans has something to do with it. We've created so many things. If you're walking around with clean clothes, a clean suit, that's a foundation of black American who did that because the, the dry cleaning was started by foundation of black Americans. Remember, see, we were the, 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 the initial labor force. We were the foundation of labor here. We were the machines. So we had to learn ways to be more efficient with doing things, with, with appliances and tools. So we would come up with these more efficient ways to do things. So black people, we were the ones who were cleaning clothes for people. So black people came up with ways to say, hey, while I'm cleaning clothes and I'm cleaning suits, let me come up with a way to clean a suit and not get it wet. We came up, came up with dry cleaning. 
we came up with certain machineries and, and tools. Did y'all know Jack Johnson came up, the, the boxer Jack Johnson, he patented a certain type of monkey wrench that's still being used today. Jack Johnson, the boxer. So many of us did so many things, but during slavery, black people, foundation black Americans who were enslaved, we weren't allowed to get patents. So if we created something on a plantation, the white slave master would be like, oh, that's a great idea, Ezekiel, give me that. And the white man would go to the patent office, hey man, look what I just created, let's get a patent on it. That happened all the time, man. That happened all the time. Um, with so many things we did, and every blue moon, the truth will come out, just like with Jack Daniels, the Jack Daniels whiskey, the brother, what is his name, Ernest Nearest, what's the brother who really made Jack Daniels? There's a whiskey that was made by a foundational black man, but a white man's name is on it, Jack Daniels. That whiskey was made, the formula was made by a black man. And they know this, white people admit this at this point, white people admit this. They know, and I think they, I, the descendants of um, Ernest Nearest's family, I think that's his name. I think they were trying to work with the family or whatever, I don't know. But they made a gazillion dollars off that man's um, formula. You understand? Yeah, we couldn't get patents. Nearest Green, that's his name. Yeah, Nearest Green, that's his name. Thank you, guys. Uncle Nearest. And as you know, if you lived in the South like I did, like my family did, our family would make that whiskey all the time. That was a, That's a part of our culture, making certain whiskeys. Man, my grandma used to do that shit. My grandma and my granddad, they were masters at that. Down there in Leeds, Alabama, they'd be up in the woods making that whiskey. A lot of black folks in the South would do that, be in the woods making that good whiskey. A lot of it was bootleg because a lot of them started doing that during the Prohibition era. You understand? Yeah, nearest green. Man, the modern toilet, the modern refrigeration, the modern heating system, the modern sec home security system, all made by foundational black Americans. We are the culture. We are the culture. Potato chips that we eat. That was made by a foundation of black American man who had indigenous aboriginal um, ancestry as well. Did y'all know that? We talked about mac and cheese, the modern mac and cheese, the baked form being created by um, um, Thomas Jefferson's slave, James um, Hemming, Sally Hemming's brother. Yeah. Real deep history. Real deep history, ladies and gentlemen. And the potato chip that we eat, modern potato chips, a black man named George Speck made modern potato chips. We eat potato chips all over. That's a part of American culture. A foundational black American man named George Speck created the modern potato chips. He was a foundational black American man with some aboriginal ancestry. George Speck. Look up George Speck. I'm talking about every little thing. So many little things, man. We are the culture. So many things that were created by us, we don't even know. We've created so much. We've created so much, we don't even know. So this is why we have to respect our lineage, ladies and gentlemen. We have to respect our lineage. And we got to watch out for these trick words like African and all that stuff when we're talking about our lineage because it, like our brother um, Claude Anderson said, anybody can grab that and latch on to it. We got a lot of folks in here. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Now, family, I was on um, the Twitter space the other day and I want y'all to hear I was on the phone with this white man who's suspected white supremacist. But he was talking about he's, he's dating a black woman and we she's a bed wench and we suspect that she was non-FBA. I kept asking him where she was from and he acted like he didn't know if she was a descendant of slaves or not. And the way 
he described how she talked about other black folks. He was using this whole narrative. He's like, well, my girlfriend, you know, she's black. And she went to an HBCU and she said that a lot of black people over there didn't want to deal with her because she was so well-spoken and articulate. He was trying that nonsense. So I had to check him on that. But I want y'all to hear what this guy was saying. I want y'all to catch on. And I'm not, I'm just going to play little snippets. There was a very long interview that I, well, a long debate that I had because I was on Twitter space for like four hours. So, but I want y'all to hear this. His name was Stewart. And listen how he said that, well, I'm white, but my great grandmother was one eighth African. Now, hold on. Listen to this. Hold Just on. get the book, ma'am. Just get the book and get the book and read, ma'am. Okay. I don't know what you got going on. Okay. All right. <laughs> listen to this. She, you know, she's very jittery. I hope she's not over there drinking coffee or the pipe or whatever. All right. What's up? We have Stuart McCann. Stuart McCann. Well, actually, it's pronounced McCann. 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 There you go. How are I'm, you? I'm really well. Thank you for uh, letting me speak. I really do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just so that everyone uh, who's listening knows, uh, I do have an African heritage. You wouldn't know it by looking at me. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. See, I, we've been telling folks, see this, when we start talking about getting tangibles, oh, weird. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, you got to watch that. So they, they'll get their Rachel Dolas all on at the drop of a hat. All right. $5 FBA. All right. Hold on. All right. Let me let me play it. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, you know, she's very jittery. I hope, hope she's not over there drinking coffee or the pipe or whatever. All right, what's up? We have Stuart McCann. Stuart McCann. Well, actually, it's pronounced McCann. 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 There you go. How I'm, are you? Doing? I'm really well. Thank you for uh, letting me speak. I really do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just so that everyone uh, who's listening knows, uh, I do have an African heritage. You wouldn't know it by looking at me. But my grandmother uh, was an eighth African. And I did go on, on Ancestry. My sister found someone who was related to my grandmother who actually knew of the family. And this woman was uh, of advanced years. She wouldn't tell us anything. Wait, so your grandmother was African? An eighth, yes. An, oh, uh, she was part of it. A small, okay, small percentage of African. Got well, it. Got it. 12%, well, I don't know. But I really don't want to put, you know, uh, labels on it at all. But again, she, she had an African heritage. You certainly couldn't talk to her about it because she was uh, born around the, the turn of the century. Right, so she was passing for white. Yes. Sure. Okay. okay. The only thing that really... Uh, gave her away was the texture of her hair. Okay, I want y'all to see what he's doing, okay? Watch these guys right here. When y'all, I'm giving y'all some game. When y'all get some suspected white supremacists around you talking about their grandma got one eighth black, you see? When we start talking about tangibles, I told people this years ago, this is what they were gonna do. They gonna start, hey, well, you know, my, my you know, come to think of it, my great grandma, she was actually a little, she was half a little kind of Negro. So now the they're getting the $5 FBA game going on now. They're, they're already revving up to be a $5 FBA, okay? I told people years ago, in, I think in one of the Hidden Colors films, I told y'all this is what they were going to do. And I'm going to prove this is about tangibles because when I start talking about compensation, listen to what he said. Listen to this here. Hold on, listen to this. 
when I start talking about compensation, check this out. I suggest compensation to the aggrieved people, particularly foundation of black Americans. And they did receive compensation. Maybe not as much compensation as you would like them to have. I'm, I'm, sir, I'm not talking about a bogus class action suit where nobody's going to really get any money. That's not... Dude, if you really want to talk about it... That's not real. I've, I've actually descended from slaves myself. Oh my God. So if you want to talk about Lord. compensation, all right, I should be entitled to exactly the same compensation that you're getting. No, I mean, no, because you're looking at me and you're saying I'm a white American. Okay. See, see, this is why we got to tighten this thing up. So that's why the, dis, the American descendant of slaves, that don't even work because he can go there too. Well, my, my grandma was one eighth black, so I'm a descendant of slaves too. So where's my check? Nobody. No, no, no. You're not a foundational black American. That's why he they can't remix foundational black American, you see. Because to be a foundational black American, that means past and present. You see? Watch words matter. Words matter. Foundational black American means past and present. So if you say I'm a foundational black American, that means I came from the black people who built this country and I'm still claiming my blackness now. See, if they if you go with descendant of slaves, technically and legally, he can get away with that. Well, my grandma was one eighth black. Somebody was enslaved. I am a descendant of slaves. So I'm supposed to get compensation too now, buddy. You see how the word, they play these word games. They play these damn word games. That's why FBA is tight. That's why they get mad. FBA is tight. They can't remix it. They can't remix it, guys. They cannot remix it. When you, you own the blackness. See, watch out for these dudes who try to get you away from the word black. No, you get that because we've been classified as black, as an aggrieved group. And that's the thing. You have to currently be classified as black to be a part of foundation of black American culture and compensation. You have to be past and currently classified as black. You're not going to do no racial dolezal. You see, you're not a foundational black American because you classify yourself as white. The key word is black. Stop listening to these people with all the plebiscite talk. Now, we can't be used in black, my brother, because in the eyes of the legal system in the jurisdiction of Turtle Island, black means death under the law, my brother. That's dumb nigga plebiscite talk. You got to tighten these words up. We got to make these words so tight that they cannot be remixed. You understand? That's why so many people are mad at the term. Why you see, man, every day these people got rooms on Clubhouse and Twitter whining about FBA. Goddamn FBA, they so damn divisive. They xenophobic. Oh, these FBA, I hate FBA. We're going to report them to the FBI. They goddamn hate group. They buck in their eyes because they can't remix it. Ain't going to be no word salad. Every angle you try to remix is going to take you right back to where it needs to be. It's going to take you right back to where it needs to go. Yeah? Real talk. You know, all that black is bad, just stop. We, we've been classified as black. We... we own that, use it, and use that to our advantage, man. You use words to your advantage. Everything can be used to your advantage. Stop playing by their rules. Power is determining your own status, and you put your definitions to what's going on. And then you define it to a point where it cannot be remixed. That's power. If you're going to play by their rules, damn what their dictionary say. Well, they're, they're law, the black law said black is dead. 
We're never going to work our shit out in their system like that, playing by their system rules. We have to take the initiative and create our own rules, our own titles. That's power, ladies and gentlemen. That is power. We got to start making power moves, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me get up out of here. I ain't going to be here too long. I, I got to get some rest. But I hope everybody understand what I'm talking about here. We're talking about staying on code and respecting foundational black American culture. We got a lot of folks in here. Shout out to everybody in here. Now, people wanted me to play uh, the, the uh, we've been talking about Crispy. <laughs> Some of y'all weren't in here at the beginning of the broadcast. The Crispy Puppet, people want the Crispy Puppet to make a comeback. We had a, 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 a new Crispy snippet. <laughs> Of Crispy singing an R&B song. All right, let me, people want to, y'all want to see the Crispy clip. There's a brand new Crispy clip that we haven't done in a while. And we haven't done Crispy. And we haven't, we just, the, the human Crispy, we were talking about the human Crispy a couple of days ago. But I hadn't done the Crispy puppet thing in a minute. And oh, I did, we did it today because my kids were playing with the puppet. The kid, that's the thing. Kids love the Crispy puppet. And that's kind of why I had to, to, to lay off doing it because too many kids were getting into it. And the crispy puppet, the character of the puppet is real vulgar. It's a very, very, very vulgar character. And um, too many kids were getting into it. Way too many kids were getting into it. I remember that some it was somebody sent me a picture. Their kids had a crispy birthday theme party. They had a birthday cake with the crispy puppet, made like the crispy puppet. I said, okay, this is... This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. They literally had a crispy puppet themed birthday party. I'm like, I, um, no, I can't do that. I can't co-sign that. This puppet is, yeah, uh, yeah. I had to lay off because you know if people really saw what crispy, who on the outside saw how vulgar the damn puppet is, and then you got kids doing parties, and eh, that's not gonna be a good look. <laughs> I, the puppet be doing cocaine and all types of it, the puppet is real wild I swear to God they had a crispy birthday party dude the kid had a crispy birthday cake I can somebody send me that picture I gotta look through my my Facebook pictures because I posted it years ago about a decade ago I don't know it's been so long ago but I forgot where it's somewhere on my social media man. And, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, here's a new snippet from <laughs> the R&B stylings of Crispy. Hold on, hold on. I look so good, I look so fly. You look at me with the love in your eye. My name is Crispy. Yeah. My name is Crispy. Oh, let's light a candle. Cause you look so fine. Won't you come over and rub my hairline? My name is Crispy. Yeah. My name is Crispy. Oh. Cause it don't matter that I'm ashy Baby, let me love on you <laughs> That's the new R&B stylings of Crispy <laughs> Crispy's about to make a comeback Crispy's about to come back <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, let me get out of here, man. Man, much respect to the family, dude. Um, um, go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. Go to ArrestedSussie.com, ladies and gentlemen. Go to BuckBreakingMovie.com. Go to OfficialFBA.com. Get my book, Foundation of Black American Race Bader, at Amazon.com.